Hello friends, you must have all used PFNA2 in management of proximal femur fractures and often in old patients the complications do happen despite of good reduction. So in this presentation I will be discussing about the points which are related to fixation of these fractures using PFNA2 and we'll be seeing whether there is another alternative for PFNA2 in which the complications can be reduced. So this is a case scenario you see there is an unstable intertrochanteric fracture with lateral wall extension. So you see there is impaction on the medial side and there is some combination also. That means there is medial as well as posterior combination. So this is an unstable trochanteric fracture which needs to be fixed with a cephalomedullary implant. Now in a cephalomedullary implant we will need an implant in which there is better purchase in this bone because the patient is an elderly one and we want good purchase inside this fragment. So the screw may not get a good hold in this area. So we want a blade option. That means the blade has to be inserted in this part. Now what the surgeon has done. So he has rightly done the fixation with a long PFNA2. So what's the good thing in this post-operative radiograph. So we are satisfied with the reduction. You see the reduction is good. The medial cortices are matching but you can say it is in slight valgus which is good. And in lateral view also, there is good alignment. The surgeon has rightly used the medial entry because he wanted to avoid any varus displacement in this fracture. Because often the unstable fractures have tendency to go into varus when the nail is inserted. A medial entry point prevents such a complication. So the entry point is good. And the blade position, it is entering in the inferior quadrant of the neck as well as an inferior quadrant of the femoral head. So it's a good position in AP. And in lateral view also you see it is almost in the center part. You see this is the femoral head. So it is central in the lateral view. So the plate, so we are satisfied with the plate position also. What about the blade length? Ideally when we are using the blade, we should keep the TAD slightly on the higher side. Here the surgeon has kept it to a lower side. In inferior quadrant, the risk of cutout is low. If the blade would have been put somewhere in the superior quadrant, then definitely with such a low TAD, there would have been a risk of cutout. But in inferior quadrant, the risk of cutout is low. What about the blade length? So blade length could have been slightly shorter to avoid this small TAD. And on the lateral side, it is not protruding much. So it is appropriate. So the blade length is more or less appropriate. And what about the nail length? The nail, since the surgeon has used a long PFNA2, so it is a biomechanically more stable implant compared to the short PFNA2. So the surgeon has definitely tried his best effort in getting a good post-operative radiograph. So is there anything which is bad in this post-operative radiograph? Grossly nothing appears to be bad right now. So why did the outcome come like this? You see the blade has migrated outwards, the fracture has still not united and rather it has got displaced and whole of this bone is resorbed. So definitely a nightmare for a surgeon despite of getting good reduction and fixation like this. So the first important factor in elderly patients which results in these complications is the poor bone quality. We have to assume that every such patient is osteoporotic. So definitely the bone quality is compromised. For that we have to start the post-operative vitamin D, calcium and in some patients we can start the teriparatide also to improve the bone quality. So that is one factor. And other factor the patient might be having comorbidities which can result in impaired bone healing. So, so that can also be one factor. But is there any factor which is in our control? Yes, the implant design. So you see the PFNA2 is actually becoming obsolete now. We are getting better implants than PFNA2. We'll see in the coming slide. So in PFNA2 there is a definite risk of blade migration. That means the blade can move either in this direction or in this direction. So it can go inside resulting in cutout somewhere here or it can migrate outside. So the purchase of the blade inside the bone will get reduced. So there is not any lock mechanism that can keep the blade in hold with the nail here. The sliding of the blade cannot be prevented in PFNA2. Other problem, the option of locking the fracture in compression is not there. Suppose 
the fracture was distracted. Now you have compressed the fracture using a compression device that is usually attached to the blade and the assembly zig. After getting that compression, we have no option to keep the blade locked in that particular position. So this is one problem. That means the fracture can still go distracted even after achieving the compression. And the PFNA2 blade has the problem of mandatory compression. That means even if you have compressed the fracture, then to remove the screwdriver from the blade, you have to give a mandatory compression. So if your fracture is already compressed and still you are trying to give compression with the blade, that can actually result in pull out of the blade from the original position. That means if you have placed the blade somewhere here, then after removing the screwdriver, the blade can actually come somewhere here. That will actually compromise the bone hold of this blade inside the bone. You see, this is the screwdriver end. When it is engaged inside the blade, there is opening up of this space. The space opens here also. That is around 5 mm. And when you disengage the screwdriver, then again it closes. That means it results in compression at the blade. But how much that compression is going to get transmitted to this fracture is debatable so it is a compulsion in some fractures which are already reduced this is an example in which you see the screwdriver is engaged inside the blade in this position now what the surgeon is trying he is trying to remove the screwdriver and in attempt to remove the screwdriver actually you see this pace is decreasing in this picture you see it is decreasing more and in this picture you see it has completely disappeared that means blade size has actually shortened in length when we remove the screwdriver. So we were lucky that in this case the bone hold was good. But suppose in very osteoporotic bone, when we do this compression maneuver, blade spirals can actually move outwards when we disengage the screwdriver. So this actually creates problem when we have fracture which is already reduced. You see the fracture is reduced here also, here also, here also and the compression is not going to help in such a scenario so this is one of the problem in pfna2 and another important concern with the pfna2 is that we don't have any option to augment our fixation in osteoporotic fractures like putting cement around the blade we don't have any option for that another important concern about the pfna2 is this white part in asian population the proximal femur is not very spacious so any wide implant that is going to be inserted is definitely going to consume more bone and more bone has to be removed to insert the nail okay, that can actually impair the healing and that can actually increase the risk of iatrogenic fracture of the trochanteric area because this area is wide in pfna2 it is around 17 millimeter and this end of the blade is often prominent laterally Suppose the fracture gets united with some compression after weight bearing, then the blade is definitely going to migrate outwards and th this prominent part of the blade can actually irritate the trochanteric bursa resulting in trochanteric bursitis. So even after union, the patient may complain of irritation over the blade insertion site. So we have now summarized what all issues we have with the PFNA2 fixed proximal femur fractures. The issue of poor bone quality is always there in old patients and the blade can migrate outwards and there is the option of this mandatory compression which can actually loosen the hold of the blade inside the femoral head and we don't have the option of locking the blade in one particular position that is after getting good compression at the fracture site so we don't have that option and this white part of the proximal part of the nail if inserted through the trochanteric area it can risk in lateral wall fracture and often the space is limited in this area leading to the risk of iatrogenic fracture of the proximal femur in some patients and the blade often remains prominent in this area because of its shape and there is no inbuilt design for cement augmentation in osteoporotic patients so do we have an alternative yes we do have a good alternative for fixation of proximal femur fractures which is much better than the pfna2 this is the TFNA, that is trochanteric femur nail advanced. So the first issue, whether we can control the blade migration outwards or not. While in the PFNA2, we didn't have that option. In TFNA, we have the option of a set screw. You see, this is screw, which actually has a block that can compress the blade against the nail. That means the sliding of this blade either inwards or outwards 
can be prevented when we tighten this screw. This screw can be tightened even when the zig is attached to the nail and the issue of mandatory compression is not there in TFNA. You see the blade doesn't have any opening here which is required for mandatory compression while in PFNA blade you see this space is there which needs to be compressed to disengage the screwdriver. So we are free from mandatory compression in TFNA. You see in this image even after disengagement of the blade from the screwdriver we don't have the issue of mandatory compression here. And the issue which was there in PFNA too was that we were not able to lock the blade after intraoperative compression. But in TFNA, we do have that option. You see this fracture is distracted and we have achieved intraoperative compression. Then after getting this compression, we were able to lock the blade in that position by just tightening the set screw that I've shown you in the previous image. You see this was a fracture which was highly unstable and distracted, but post-operative radiograph shows that the compression has been well achieved. And you see this image. This is the set screw and this is the block which is going to impact over the blade and this block will prevent the sliding of the blade in either direction. So we are able to lock the fracture in compression and the fracture will not distract in post-operative period. And the wide proximal part which was there in the PFNA2 has been reduced to around 15 millimeter in TFNA2. You see this part is narrower compared to the PFN. It is around 15 millimeter while this was 17 millimeter. So the risk of lateral wall breakage and the hydrogen fracture and the amount of bone that needs to be removed for inserting the nail will be lower in case of TFNA. And the issue of prominent blade which remains outside the bone has been improved in TFNA. You see the blade is actually sharply cut outside. So it will remain flush to the lateral surface or it will be only slightly prominent but will match the contour of the lateral surface. Only thing you need to take care whenever you are inserting the blade you need to match the deadline of the sleeve with the deadline of the screwdriver. Then there will not be any problem of mal rotation of this blade in opposite direction. And what about the augmentation? You see the TFNA blade has holes here which are meant for insertion of the cement through a cannula inserted through the blade. So whenever we are suspecting poor bone quality, we can augment our fixation with cement which will be distributed in the femoral head through these holes which are meant for cement insertion. You see the TFNA implant is having several advantages over the conventional PFNA2. So whenever you are approaching these fractures in elderly patients, you should definitely keep the option of TFNA for fixation. So I hope you like the presentation. If you have any queries, you can just put those in comments. Thank you.